Welcome to video 180 in series 3, and now I'll just do some minor bug fixes. Alright, so I thought it would be the last video for code, but it isn't in this chapter. Uh, there's some minor things that I need to change since I was playing around, I noticed that, and also one improvement to make as well. Uh, so open the NPC state melee attack script, and what's going on is that this flag, is melee attacking, is not being set to false sometimes. So what happens is the NPC could be carrying out a melee attack, their state changes, so for example they were struck, the flag stays true, and now they are no longer able to continue attacking, because it's a requirement that they're not in that state. So it looks very odd, of course, and is not desirable. So to uh, solve that, we just need to go up here, like in to patrol state, add in there, uh, set it to false, so that will automatically make that happen. And uh, I just noticed something, this to alert state is a bit odd, there's never called, so just get rid of the code there. And uh, also in to pursue state, add in npc.ismelee attacking is equal to false. Now inside of the state pattern script, also here we need to do that. So in the activate struck state method, that's a good place to uh, turn that flag to false. Now it's inside of the script, so just is melee attacking is equal to false within the activate struct state method. And uh, now another uh, minor change is uh, with the melee weapons, if you go and hit an NPC, the enemy hit effect is never going to be instantiated because it's looking for the older script. So let's just change that. So to take damage, there we go, done. Uh, now the next thing is, at the moment, so I can just quickly demonstrate that if you go uh, run up to um, things and you try and hit them, typically only one item gets hit at a time. Now because the crowbar has a very high mass, uh, it can sometimes, it can hit enemies more than one at a time, but you can basically only hit one object at a time because I'm relying on time dot time greater than next swing. I'm purposefully limiting it so that you can only hit one object per swing, basically. Now, uh, after playing for a bit, I realized it's a lot more fun. So I had another scene with lots of wooden barrels and stuff. And it was just a lot more fun to be able to break lots of objects with one swing or a few swings and then lots of stuff just breaks at the same time. So to overcome that, copy this. Comment it out in case you don't want this uh, behavior that I'm changing it to, and get rid of this time dot time stuff. All right, now let me just bring it up here. Okay, good. Comment out this line as well, and comment out the uh, variable. Okay, done. So that will take care of that, and now I'll be able to uh, swing with no problems. All right, so now I can hit multiple things at the same time. There we go. That was an example of that. Let's see here. Yep, there we go. Two got hit at the same time. So that's pretty good. Now I can't demonstrate it with the NPCs. They're kind of standing too far apart. Oh yeah, looks like, yeah, looks like that's working all right. Oops. Oh yeah, I forgot. They've got quite a long reach. And uh, I got defeated. Anyway, that's besides the point. So that's it for uh, this video, and uh, perhaps in the next video, what I should show you is how to make use of uh, waypoints, and uh, perhaps just um, show you as well that you can set up, you know, uh, other factions. It doesn't have to just only be friendlies and enemies. It could be uh, another enemy who's enemy to both of you. For example, both other factions. You could easily uh, do that with this uh, system. So I think that's what I'll show you in the next video. Alright, anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you later.